Learning Objectives After completing this module, learners will be able to understand the salient functions of the environment, learn the carrying and absorbing capacity of the environment, learn about the global warming and ozone depletion and their adverse effects on the environment globally, learn the major issues in the environment in India. Understand the severity of the soil degradation in the country. Learn about various activities of the Pollution Control Board in India. Learn the basic concepts of the sustainability of the environment. Understand non-conventional ways of power generation and their future scopes in the country. Learn about the biocompost and biopest or fertilizers in agriculture and alternative power generation drives in the country. The definition and functions of the environment. Environment is a sum total of water, air and land interrelationships among themselves and also with the human being, other living organisms and property. It includes all the physical and biological surrounding and their interactions. Environmental studies provide an approach towards understanding the environment of our planet and the impact of human life upon the environment. Sourcing and Sinking The environmental functions that support human life and welfare can be grouped into four main types source, sink, service, and spiritual. The source function refers to its natural resources which have originated directly from the biophysical environment. Examples include water, soil, timber, fish stocks, minerals and fossil fuels. Earth's natural demographic, atmospheric, hydrologic and biologic systems are responsible for both their existence and their uneven distribution across the planet. The safe absorption of the wastes and pollution produced by human activities and life is referred to as Earth's sink function. It is called a carrying and absorptive capacity of the nature. This implies that the resource extraction is not above the rate of regeneration of the resource and the wastes generated are within the assimilating capacity of the environment. Service and Spiritual The service function shows the provision of environmental or ecosystem services that support life without requiring human action. For example, the Earth's natural greenhouse effect operates to ensure that the atmosphere holds the heat produced by incoming solar radiation during the day so we are able to keep warm at night. Climate Regulation By spiritual function, the environment shows its intrinsic recreational, physiological, aesthetic and spiritual values. Environmental Crisis and Global Warming The past economic growth has been responsible for the pollution in environmental sources massively. The natural storage of conventional source of energy are increasingly diminishing. Moreover, the standard of human health has been also deteriorated. More than 70% of the water resource in India is polluted at present. In these consequences, the expenditure on health is also in the uprising state. Global warming. Global warming, also referred to as climate change, is the observed century scale rise in the average temperature of the Earth's climate system and its related effects. Multiple lines of scientific evidence show that the climate system is warming. The largest human influence has been the emission of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. Numerous findings have been recognized by the National Science Academies of the major industrialized nations and are not disputed by any scientific body of national or international standing.
ozone depletion in the atmosphere. The main cause of ozone depletion and the ozone hole is man-made chemicals, especially man-made halocarbons, refrigerants, solvents, propellants and foam-blowing agents, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, HCFCs, halons, referred to as ozone-depleting substances, ODS. These compounds are transported into stratosphere by the winds after being emitted at the surface. It is generally observed to increase as emission of halocarbons increased. Ozone sits in the upper atmosphere and absorbs ultraviolet radiations, another type of solar energy which is harmful to humans, animals and plants. CFCs and halons cause chemical reactions that break down ozone molecules, reducing ozone's ultraviolet radiation absorbing capacity. State of Indian Environment India has abundant mineral and natural resources, although severe environmental issues can be seen in the country's perspective. They are land degradation, biodiversity, loss, air pollution, mainly in urban areas, scarcity of fresh water resources and the issues of solid waste management in the country. Chipko Movement Chipko Movement began in 1973 in present-day Uttarakhand and went on to become a rallying point for many future environmental movements all over the world. It created a precedent for starting of non-violent protest in India. The Chipko movement emerged as a peasant and women's movement for forest rights. Though the various protests were largely decentralized and autonomous, in addition to the characteristic tree-hugging, Chipko protesters utilized a number of other techniques grounded in Mahatma Gandhi's concept of Satyagraha, non-violent resistance. Issues of Land Degradations and Pollution Control Board some important factors responsible for soil degradation in India are loss vegetation due to massive deforestation, conventional mineral resources, extraction and increasing uses of fuel wood, shifting cultivation trends, encroachments into forest lands, forest fires, lack of appropriate soil conservation program in the country, repeated uses of crop rotation, uncontrolled uses of fertilizers and pesticides, improper management of irrigation programs and the receding of groundwater level due to indiscriminating extraction and others. The Central Pollution Control Board, CPCB of India, is a statutory organization established in 1974 under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. MOEFCC. It coordinates the activities of the state pollution control boards by providing technical assistance and guidance. It is the apex organization in country in field of pollution control. As a technical wing of MOEF, the current acting chairman of the board is Sri S. P. Singh Parihar, IAS. Environment and Sustainable Development A state in which the demands placed on the environment can be met without reducing its capacity to allow everyone to live well is called sustainability of the nature. Evidence is strong that we are exceeding and eroding the earth's carrying capacity and its expected limit. Environmental sustainability is the context within which social and economic life happen. Also, social inequity directly affects environmental viability. The activities of United Nations Conference on Environment and Development The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNICEF, was a major United Nations conference held in Rio de Janeiro from 3rd to 14th June of 1992. Due to conflict relating to sustainability, being too big for individual member states to handle, Earth Summit was held as a platform for other member states to collaborate. The issues 
were discussed there as a the systematic scrutiny of patterns of production in particular the production of toxic compounds b the alternative source of energy to replace the use of fossil fuels c the new reliance on public transportation system in order to reduce vehicle emissions and d the growing usage and limited supply of water brentland commission and its proposals the brentland commission argues against the assertions of the 1972 stockholm conference on the human environment and provides an alternative perspective on sustainable development being unique from that of 1980 world conservation strategy the brentland commission pushed for the idea that the while the environment was previously perceived as a sphere separate from human emotion or action and while development was a term habitually used to describe political goals or economic progress it is more comprehensive to understand the associated two terms in relation to each other we can better understand the environment in relation to development and environment both because they cannot and should not be distinguished as a separate entities strategies of sustainable development after cleaning it and compressing the biogas we can make it equivalent to compressed natural gas cng all over the world cng is used as a cooking and home heating gas it is safe and can easily be transported by pipelines to large distances in india with the present law of saving cows the cattle sheds can have biogas cleaning and compress facility so that cng could be produced with about 300 clear and sunny days in a year the calculated solar energy incidence on india's land area is about 5000 trillion kilowatt per hours per year the daily average solar power plant generation capacity in india is 0.20 kilowatt per meter square of used land areas equivalent to 14 to 800 peak rated capacity operating hours in a year with available commercially proven technology hydro power plants in the country india is the seventh largest producer of hydroelectric power in the world as of 30 april 2017 india's installed utility scale hydroelectric capacity was 44594 megawatt or 13.5% of its total utility power generation capacity india's hydroelectric power potential is estimated at 148700 megawatt at 60% load factor by recent times traditional practices composting urban india is the world's third largest generator of garbage almost 70 to 75% of which remains untreated the composting is nature's way of recycling and is one of the simplest ways to manage your waste what's great is that it can be done at home composting involves decomposing everyday kitchen waste into a rich soil known as compost basically when you compost your organic or kitchen waste you are returning nutrients back into the soil as a result the cycle of life continues summary let us summarize what we have learnt environment performs four functions supplies resources assimilates wastes sustains life by providing genetic and biodiversity and provides aesthetic services population explosion effluent consumption and production have placed a huge stress on the environment the feature of absorbing capacity of the environment is staggeringly decreasing due to the increased level of pollution in our present world developmental activities in india have put immense pressure on its finite natural resources besides creating impact on human health and well-being
The threat of India's environment is of two dimensions. Threat of poverty, induced environmental degradation and the threat of pollution from affluence and a rapidly growing industrial sector. Though the government, through various measures, attempts to safeguard the environment, it is also necessary to adopt a path of sustainable development. Sustainable development is development that meets the need of the present generation without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. Promotion of natural resources, conservation, preserving regenerative capacity of ecological system and avoiding the imposition of environmental risks on future generations would lead to sustainable development.